Back in the home garage, gonna do a little work on the old Spec E46. Got some AIM add-ons that I'm gonna tack on to my Solo 2 DL that I've got in this thing. Solo 2 DL, super strong tool as it is out of the box. At its core, gives you that GPS speed, which gives you your benchmark lap times, predictive lap times, which I probably look at way too much on track. Also, if you've got something like an E46 or newer, you can get whatever sensors are transmitted across the CAN network to that Solo 2 DL. So in this car, that's stuff like throttle position sensor, oil temp, water temp. However, there are sensors that I may want as a driver or to know the health of my car that are not transmitted across the CAN network. So this package allows me to add some sensors to the Solo 2 DL. That's something that really was previously only reserved for the full dash line of AIM stuff. So pretty awesome to now be able to add on external sensors. So this analog CAN converter allows you to add four sensors to the Solo 2 DL. And today I'm gonna add brake pressure, fuel pressure, oil pressure, you know, oil pressure, good to know the health of the engine, how's it doing, fuel pressure, good for diagnostic, brake pressure, that's good for, as a driving tool so that if say James got in the car and I wanted to compare how, how is he applying the brakes versus how I'm applying the brakes, maybe I can gain some time there. And then we've got all the miscellaneous components that allow me to plug this in to the car. You know, it can't just plug a sensor into nowhere. So have oil distribution block for the oil pressure sensor, have fuel pressure T, brake pressure T. Um, also have this data hub, which is not required to make this an add-on package to the Solo 2 DL, but the data hub is needed if you also have a Smarty Cam because now the Smarty Cam is gonna go into the data hub, the CAN converter is gonna go into the data hub, and then the data hub into the Solo 2 DL. Let's get this stuff all unpackaged and kinda get it pre-configured on the bench and see what it's gonna look like. All right, got everything unboxed, got data hub, CAN converter box, cables that go with it. Got these two sensors that are zero to 150 PSI sensors, which this is for the oil pressure. This one is for the fuel pressure. And then this is a zero to 2000 PSI sensor for the brake pressure. So we have all of these components to help the install process. You know, this is a fuel pressure tap point that you cut open, uh, splice a fuel line, and then this threads into here. And then that's the sensor for the fuel line. This is a brake pressure tap point. We have these in a couple different sizes. This is a dash four AN, which is specific for the E46. You do have to put these uh, flare nuts on and cut a hard line and then flare the nut, 37 degree flare required. And then this is the oil distribution block, which this takes, uh, replaces the oil pressure switch on the back, doesn't replace, it uh, sort of substitutes, I guess. This now goes into where that M12 port was for the oil pressure switch. Put the oil pressure switch here. And then now we have two eighth inch MPT ports. So we have an oil temp on this car already, so we only need to use one of these ports, which is gonna be this one for oil pressure. Now, another piece of this is sensors are sensitive to vibration. And when you hard mount this sensor to the block, if you would just put it straight in here, this sensor may fail prematurely. So we also have this remote mount center line that will go into this distribution block. And then this will go mount on this so that we can remote mount this to the chassis somewhere where it sees less vibration. Also, each of these patch cables. So you see the sensor only has but so much lead to it. So we have a patch cable to go from the sensor to the channel on the CAN converter. You see these each have channels, channel one, two, three, four, and this patch cable will plug into said channel whichever you choose. This routes through the firewall somewhere. And then this into the sensor. 
these patch cables are available in half meter increments from 0.5 meters all the way up to four meters. So if you're just trying to do something really close to where this is going to live, you may only need a 0.5 meter. If you're trying to do something like differential temperature, well, you may need a three and a half or four meter line. So now we have a little bit of a roadmap here where we've got the data hub, which this is gonna go to the Solo 2 DL. I've got three open ports here. One's gonna go for the Smarty Cam, but then here we have the analog can converter that's then splitting off and going into its various sensors. So channel three, here we have fuel pressure, channel two, here we have brake pressure, and then channel one, we have oil pressure, which you see has the remote mount line attached to it so that we can attach this sensor not directly to the oil filter housing. It comes with this Adele clamp that you can then clamp it on down and mount that at the location of your choosing. Now to work on getting this in the car. Got to gain access to under the intake manifold for doing the oil pressure and then fuel line will be back there, brake pressure right over here. Got to weasel around some stuff, try to get to this sensor right there. That's the oil pressure switch. Going to undo that and then put the distribution block in place. All right, oil pressure switch is out. Now I'll take my banjo, my brush washer's on, and try to finagle this thing up in here. Oil distribution block is in, oil pressure sensor is mounted. We've got the pressure sensor mounted here with the remote line routed over to the distribution block up under there. Next, I'm going to splice into this fuel line here to get the T for the fuel pressure sensor. And then also, before you get into fuel, have yourself a little fire extinguisher handy just because safety first. Fuel pressure sensor is in place. Got the line spliced, hose clamps tight. Now I want to test and make sure I've got no fuel leaks. So I've got this little switch right here, which is actually used for my pump out to power the fuel pump. I'm going to use it to turn on the system and see if I have any leaks. No leaks, looking good. Next up is the brake pressure line, which I've got to get this line here, routed to here. I need to get that line off, and then I'm going to splice in right here with our brake pressure tap point. Before I got started on pulling that line apart, I wanted to make sure I had my flare tool, my 37 degree flare tool. Turns out I don't know where it is, so I got to find that thing or buy a new one. So I'm gonna hold off on pulling that brake line. Still some other things I can work on, like getting the wires, patch cables routed, go ahead and get some of the other aim pieces hooked up and cleaned up. So I'm gonna start on that. I caught some flack in the last video for not just removing the doors and propping them open. So I'm going to remove the doors this time. because it's just that easy. That was easy. There's a nice little pass through right here in the ECU box through the firewall to make life easy. Just unhooked the Smarty Cam, which is then gonna go into the data hub, the ACC is going to go into the data hub, and now the data hub to the Solo 2 DL. Oh, golly, that hurt.
Been working on getting the data hub mounted up in here. Got it mounted. Let's see what kind of rat's nest I got up under here. So we got data hub, smarty cam, analog can controller. Can controller zip tied in place up here. Still got to route the patch cables to this baby. Oh, working in race cars is fun, right? I really should have brought some zip ties down here so I don't have to get back down. Oh well. Got the hard line out. Now I need to cut the hard line here and here so that we can insert this tap point into the hard line so we can get the brake pressure. All right, got these lines flared. So hopefully this will now not leak. This requires a 37 degree flare for this. So I had to borrow a tool from Dave. Now to put the sensor in, hook this baby back up and then test and make sure I got no leaks and see if we got brake pressure, fuel pressure, and oil pressure on this thing now. Line installed with the pressure sensor. Now I've got to get this thing back up on jack stands and do a little brake bleed. Guess who I got for some brake bleeding again. Since I undid the line before the ABS, that means I probably induced air into the ABS system, which means I want to bleed the ABS system. So got the Foxwell tool going to go through the process and do an ABS bleed on this thing. So you gotta have a pressure bleeder to apply pressure to the system. And then I'm gonna open up each bleeder valve as it tells me which one to open. Uh, just did the right rear. Now it's telling me to do the left rear. So I have the left rear with a bleed bottle, catch bottle on it. And now I'm going to activate it. I pushed the button too early last time before I had the right rear open and just did it again. That right rear had a bunch of air bubbles. So I'm going to continue to do this until I get no air bubbles. All right, bleed is complete. No more air bubbles. Now time to configure the aim device and make sure everything works. Get, make sure I'm getting my pressures and then put everything back together and make sure I don't have any leaks. And then I think uh, on to some other little prep things before this event. So I hooked everything up. However, looks like the firmware is old on the DL. So nothing is working for the analog can controller. So now let's update the aim and see if that does the trick. <laughs> Awesome. Everything's working. Now let's button up under the hood. Everything is all buttoned up under the hood. Also, everything is all buttoned up, secured, zip tied in place, cleaned up under the dash, and everything is working as it should. So excited to have a little bit more data to use next time at the track. Next time at the track is actually coming up in just a few days as heading to VIR for the BIM World Test Day, BWCCA Club Race Weekend, and it's also the Specky 46 Belt Weekend, which brings out some pretty fun competition in the old Specky 46 paddock. So that means I've got a little bit more prep to do, but not a ton. I'm going to change brake pads. I'm going to give this thing a once over. And then also I need to undo some setup things that I did while I was at CMP to go back to my VIR baseline. VIR baseline setup back in this thing, got the sway bar hooked back up, made a few shock changes at CMP, got those back to what I know I like at VIR, and really feel pretty good about being ready to rock for the weekend. So a few more little things to do, put the doors back on, get it back on the ground, clean the wheels, got to get a set of tires mounted this week. But other than that, ready for the event. And if you're going to be at VIR this weekend, be sure to stop by, say hey. And as always, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a comment. And if you want to see more action in the Words Garage, stay tuned for more content. You ready to kill? Should be an awesome crazy weekend. We are ready to kill it this year. It's good. It's going to be a wild ride.